fellow Falcoholics, what is up? Welcome to another episode of the Falcoholic Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Knight, at Falcoholic Kevin on Twitter, here to bring you the next in our Falcons roster review series for the 2023 season. We are into the offseason now in full force with the Senior Bowl behind us, the Combine coming up in just a little over a week. Uh, that the players will actually start arriving. Uh, we won't get on-field drills for like another week after that, unfortunately. But, you know, it's coming. Um, and free agency is going to be, I believe, the second week of March. So we're getting closer and closer, ladies and gentlemen, to the uh, real meat of the offseason here. We've been bringing you a lot of draft coverage, but I figured since free agency is also approaching, we should mix it up a little and, and get to some free agency talk as well. Um, so today's show, we're going to be focusing on the wide receiver position for the Falcons, taking a look at the guys the Falcons currently have under contract, the upcoming free agents, and then also uh, some of my top choices, the guys that I like that are out there in free agency. Obviously not going to be an exhaustive list. Uh, there are a lot of free agent wide receivers. There are every year, um, but definitely uh, some some interesting names to to consider for the Falcons. Um, we won't really get into the draft too much. This is more of a free agency focused thing, but certainly, you know, the draft is another place that the Falcons could look to bolster the wide receiver position. We've seen some mocks uh, feature them taking a receiver like on day two um, pretty frequently. Uh, day three, obviously, is is a good place to take receivers always. So uh, we'll definitely continue to cover that throughout the rest of the offseason. But today, looking more at the free agency veteran side of things. And we'll kick off that talk with a look at the receivers that are currently under contract for the Falcons. So right now... Atlanta has uh, five guys under contract. The first one, of course, and the big the big name is Drake London, the rookie who took over the wide receiver one job for the Falcons, did a great job. Uh, outside of a few frustrating fumbles, I think he had a really good season. I think he's a guy that you can probably rely on to be your wide receiver one going forward. That's great that they found that um, and, and hit on that pick. That's tremendous. Drake London fits this offense really well. He blocks well, um, does a lot of stuff really well. Um, and to play that well as a rookie is always a good sign too. So Falcons in good shape at wide receiver one. The rest of the wide receiver depth chart is where it gets a little bit sketchy, right? Because after Drake Lennon, there's really nobody else under contract that you feel good about starting. Um, there's certainly some intriguing names here. Jared Bernhardt was a preseason darling last year, showed some early chemistry with uh, Desmond Ritter, but ended up getting hurt and wound up on IR, sadly, after he finally made his way uh, onto the game day roster. He did actually make the 53-man roster out of training camp. So I think the Falcons may have something in Bernhardt, um, assuming he's back healthy. Uh, he'll obviously have a chance in camp again to to prove himself once more. I think as as their, their slot guy, you know, I think Bernhardt could absolutely fill that role. Maybe he could even play some on the outside. But again, this is a guy who played 1% of the snaps for the Falcons last year. Not really someone you're trying to bring in. And depend on as like your full-time starter, that's pretty unwise, but definitely someone who I think can can earn a spot on this 53-man roster. Uh, we also have Frank Darby still on his rookie contract, uh, who did play a little bit more towards the end of the season. Still hasn't done a whole lot with his touches, but another guy that potentially could um, get more opportunities in training camp. The Falcons also signed a couple of uh, reserve futures guys in Josh Ali and Rashawn Henry. I think both one or both of those guys were on the practice squad to end the season. Um, so some guys that are going to be, you know, competitors in camp, we'll see if they make it, end up making any noise at the end of the day. Um, but just some solid depth guys there. Everyone on this list is pretty young too. Um, so there's always the, the chance that they do you know, develop and, and, and end up having a breakout sort of campaign. Not a very high chance of that happening, unfortunately, but um, there is a chance, of course. So Falcons have the most important spot locked up in wide receiver one. And, you know, we should always mention that they do have Kyle Pitts as well, who basically functions as a wide receiver. You know, he plays a good number of snaps on the outside. Um, so in effect, they really do have like two top receiving targets locked up. So it's not necessarily as dire as the, jet, the depth chart sort of suggests right now. But I do think they could still use a really good wide receiver too. Um, you know, and, and filling out the rest of that depth chart with a good wide receiver three and so on is important. But um, not necessarily as dire as you might think just by looking at that uh, <laughs> at that depth chart. Um, the next place we'll go is the pending free agents. The Falcons do have three uh, wide receivers that were on their roster in 2022 hitting free agency this year. Um, the first one, Lamade Zacchaeus, uh, who basically functioned as the Falcons wide receiver too for much of the season, actually had pretty good chemistry with 
Marcus Mariota was one of the only receivers, really, that had good chemistry with Mariota. Um, he played over 70% of the snaps. And is a guy that I would definitely consider bringing back. I believe um, Spotrack has his uh, calculated value at about three point seven million. So I think that's fair. Um, if he's a, if he's willing to come back on like a two year deal, you know, six to, to six to eight million over two years or something like that. Um, you know, see if he can continue to develop. I think he could. You know, Zacchaeus can play the slot. He's played the outside as well, so that versatility is nice. I do think he's a guy that you probably want to be your wide receiver three. Not really more than that, um, but I would definitely be happy to bring him back and solidify at least that wide receiver three spot with a guy that we know is dependable and has a lot of experience in the scheme um, and we know the coaching staff likes. There's also a Demir Bird who really started to come on somewhat late in the season. Um, Bird is more of that deep threat, didn't really get much work outside of the deep threat stuff, but look, if they don't get who they want in the draft... You know, I, I wouldn't mind throwing another, you know, vet minimum contract at Bird um, to get him in as the deep threat if they can't manage to secure a higher end guy like in the draft or in free agency. Um, and then Kadero Hodge was one of the big special teams players. You know, he only played about 18, 20 percent of the snaps on offense. But I thought Hodge was absolutely fine whenever he had to play offense. I think he he was able to contribute. He was able to get open and, and catch some passes here and there. Um, so I'm, I'm satisfied with Hodge. I would definitely bring him back for his special teams role. And, you know, as the wide receiver five, six, he's, he's very competent. Um, I would be very happy to bring back Hodge and I'd be kind of surprised if they don't because of his contributions on special teams. So not a lot of big ticket players necessarily in this group. You know, Zacchaeus is more of that mid range, uh, veteran, but I do think, um, you know, you could bring back potentially all three of these guys and give yourself a nice floor. Um, and, and having, you know, a pretty, like a, a solid, if uns, unspectacular group, you know, you're really missing a wide receiver too, too, but I think you're in pretty good shape with the depth chart otherwise with these guys coming back. So we'll see if they elect to bring back any or all of these guys when the time comes. But, um, you know, I think these, all three of them showed that they can absolutely contribute in this offense. And you would think someone like Bird would be able to play a little bit better with Ritter, who's more willing to hit the deep ball and, and actually <laughs> throw it up for his guys from time to time so uh and actually be on target occasionally unlike Marcus Mariota so um but yeah that that's that's the three guys not a lot to cover there not a lot of money necessarily to get thrown around with that group but an interesting trio and I think you know at least Zacchaeus probably you bring back and, and Hodge as well as like a cheap uh special teams maven sort of signing um then we move on to the free agent target list it's a long one because there's a lot of free agent wide receivers. There always are. I mean, I think if you actually looked at it, I would bet there's like more wide receivers in the league than like any other position, like any other specific position. Like if you can't all offensive linemen, obviously that's going to be more, but every, any single position I bet wide receiver is the most numerous of any group. Um, and free agency is no different. You know, I don't think this is a particularly star studded group uh, in free agency. Like there, there's not some, you know, big name, guy at the top right that you know and the falcons i don't think would be interested in those super high priced guys anyway but i'll, I'll bring up you know some of the names that i like some of the ones that i'm interested the most interested in um i do really like jacoby myers from new england you know he's been playing with less than stellar quarterback play his production hasn't been outstanding but it's been good every single year for the last several years i think myers is clearly a, a very good wide receiver too at the nfl level he blocks really well. He's an excellent contested catch player. Um, and I think he just gives the Falcons another legit threat opposite Drake London. So if they do want to spend a good chunk of money, because I do think Myers is probably going to end up in that 10 to 15 million a year range, because like I said, this isn't the most star studded group in free agency, right? Um, it's just not that great. Uh, the, the guys that are good will get pushed up in terms of cash value. So it may not be the best value proposition for the Falcons to go after Jacoby Myers, but he's probably the biggest name that I would consider bringing in. Um, another guy that's in that, you know, in that expensive range is DJ Shark, um, who I think is a good receiver. He had that almost thousand yard season in Jacksonville, but he's been hurt a lot. I mean, I do think he's still going to be asking you know, it, maybe it'll come in under 10 million. That's what he made last year with the Lions. And he once again had his season shortened by injuries. So I'm I'm 
sort of hoping that that number comes down. If it does come down, I mean, if you're looking for a, a deep threat, you know, that's a really good receiver when he's healthy, that's DJ Shark. I mean, he's absolutely proven that every single time he steps in the field, he's a really dangerous deep threat. But again, the injuries are really piling up. He hasn't really played a lot of games in recent years. So it's a risky one. I mean, I'd be willing to maybe do a one-year deal with Shark and, and see if maybe he can get over some of those health issues. That's obviously the hope. Um, you know, you never want a guy to have to deal with injuries like that. It's it's always sad when it does happen, but I don't believe uh, Shark has actually played a full season ever in the NFL. I think the most games he's ever played is 15, and that was his 1,000-yard season with Jacksonville in 2019. So he's clearly got the talent to do it. And, and, and look, I mean, he's really good when he's on the field. In just uh, 11 games with the Lions, he had over 500 yards and three touchdowns. So very productive when he's out there. You just probably need to have solid depth behind him because it's likely that he's going to miss some games here and there. Um, but I do like shark if he's, especially if he's lower than that 10 million number. Um, next guy, uh, would be Darius Slayton, who I think is, is likely to come in. You know, it's kind of hard to tell if you look at Spotrack, it says he's going to be in that like 3 million range. And I sort of think someone's probably going to push it more than that to be totally honest. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll see where he comes in. Um, I do like Darius Slayton a lot. I think that uh, he is the type of guy that would be a good fit for this offense and that isn't really going to break the bank. You know, I, I sort of have him more penciled in at that, like, $6 million per number. Um, so that's sort of where I land on that one. But, you know, if he if he is closer to $3 million, that's great. I would definitely have him in here for that. I do think he's a guy that's a wide receiver three at worst. I think he has the potential to be a wide receiver two. But... Um, you know, not going to necessarily break the, break the bank either. Um, so I like that. Paris Campbell is another sort of buy low candidate, right? I think, again, his value is kind of all over the place and what you'd expect him to get. He did finally have a good season this year in 2022 um, and play a whole season after really dealing with just tons of injuries the first three years. He played all 17 games this year, had over 600 yards and three touchdowns. Um, you know, and Campbell came into the league as more of a deep threat, but um, I think he's really developed his, like, short uh, short passing game and, and yards after catch threat. So, um, you know, I, I think that he's an interesting guy. Um, I do think he's a player that, you know, you're probably not wanting to give a multi-year deal to probably bringing him in on a one-year deal, um, in that three to 6 million range. But again, someone who has, has the upside certainly as a former first round pick, uh, or, uh, as, excuse me, as, as a former second round pick, um, that you know is someone that, that potentially has that upside of being a high-end wide receiver too, if he could finally stay healthy. So um, getting into like the cheaper options, uh, you know, guys like Mecole Hardman and DeAndre Carter are sort of like that second tier of player where I think they're good wide receiver three types. I don't really know that they're going to be pushing for that wide receiver two label, but that's fine. You know, I, I do, you know, the more proven option is probably DeAndre Carter, you know, in that, and, and Carter also returns, um, which is not really something that the Falcons need. So it's possible they won't go that direction because of that. But, um, you know, Carter does offer that return flexibility should anything happen to Avery Williams. I do think he's a really dangerous um, short yardage, you know, yards after catch type of guy, which the Falcons do need. Um, and he's still playing well. You know, he'll be he'll be 30 years old this season, but hasn't shown any signs of slowing down. Uh, really solid, reliable veteran. So, you know, I, I think he's a good player. I would be happy to bring him in at that, you know, 3 million number. There's also Miko Hardman, who's sort of, um, you know, has had several years of good play in Kansas City, sort of was de-emphasized this year, even after uh, Tyreek Hill left. And I think that tells you that he's really not the type of guy that you're going to build a passing game around. But look, he's got that deep speed. He can be good in that short area of the field. You know, this is a guy that's probably not going to be overly expensive either. And we know he has that elite game breaking speed. So just 25 years old, you know, maybe there's still something to be unlocked there. Um, but you have to think if the Chiefs couldn't get it out of him, that probably no one else will either. But again, if he's only going to be in that, you know, low price $3 million range, I would definitely consider taking a flyer and, and seeing what you can get there um, as somebody to fill out your death chart. Another Chief to consider, Justin Watson, sort of more in that you know, Arthur Smith mold at over, you know, 6'3", 215, 
finally got a chance to play significantly um, in 2022 uh, and did have, you know, 300 yards and two touchdowns as like a depth piece in the Kansas City offense. Um, and he's a guy that, that I like, someone that may be able to sort of do a little bit more, um, you know, in a in a more friendly scheme. I, I think he's a great blocker too. So um, someone that could be considered as more of like a wide receiver four or five type, but someone who's interesting. And then another name I'll throw out there is Dante Pettis, uh, who did flash a little bit with the Bears this year. Never has really lived up to his hype um, after he was taken uh, by the... 49ers you know early in the second round um back in 2018 has never really lived up to that um so maybe this is just me trying to justify my bad draft takes about Dante Pettis all those years ago by bringing him back to Atlanta but did show some signs of life with the Bears this year um so if he's you know bringing him out and basically a vet men deal try him out in camp see if you can get anything there um you know I think uh it's interesting I, I would be interested in seeing that but you know those are just a couple of the guys uh, that are out there. There's a lot of other names in this group. There's a lot of potentially good players in here to choose from. Um, but that's sort of the, the, a good, cho- a good chunk basically of, of the guys to consider from that group. Um, so that's basically the crux of the wide receiver position covered most of the, the high points there. I think it is important for the Falcons to improve this group. Um, the depth I think is especially questionable, you know, right now, like without bringing back Zacchaeus or Hodge or any of these guys, it's in pretty dire straits, right? I mean, they 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 really need help here. I, I do think that they're likely to bring in at least one outside free agent as well as re-signing the guys that are, are you know, that are the pending free agents. And then probably a draft pick is coming as well. I don't know if it'll be that sort of early day two type of pick or if it'll be more of um, a day three selection that you're hoping will, will sort of grow. Um but they they do need help here. You know, I think it's not as glaring because they have Kyle Pitts and they're not and they're, they're this is not a team that runs a lot of three wide receiver sets. You know, they're they're a team that's more willing to use multiple tight ends and they do that frequently, right? They run uh, you know, 12 and 13 personnel at the highest rate of basically any team in the NFL. Um, they're not necessarily going to put a lot of emphasis on the slot or having a ton of wide receivers out there, but I think you still need quality guys because you know, if Drake London has to miss any time or Kyle Pitts has to miss any time, if either one of those guys is out, this is an extremely limited uh, pass catching group and you need more options. Even if you just get a bunch of wide receiver threes in here to, to be able to distribute the ball to, I think that's one, you know, strategy that could pay off for you. I do think they would benefit from getting that that higher end wide receiver two type guy. But, you know, you that that may not present itself. You know, it may be that Myers is too expensive that they don't want to take a risk on like a shark you know Slayton gets more money or doesn't want to come to Atlanta whatever and then you're forced to settle for some wide receiver three types and you know a a day two or day three guy in the draft I think you know you may have to to settle for that because you have Kyle Pitts you could probably survive with without another like top tier wide receiver but you do need more options there and you know I think when we get to the tight end section which will be the next show you know re-signing someone like Michael Pruitt to be another threat in the tight end pat as like another tight end um, receiving threat is also going to be able to take some pressure off of this wide receiver group to, to carry so much of the load. But appreciate everyone for tuning in with me today here on the Falcoholic Podcast. Thanks so much for that, guys. Uh, if you don't mind liking and subscribing, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, leave us that five-star review if you're listening to the audio. Um, and uh, you can follow me, Kevin, at falcoholickevin.com. Check out the falcoholic.com. Um, Wow. Check out thefalcoholic.com <laughs> for all that tremendous written content. I'm trying to get to through too many ad reads, you know, here at once. You know, unfortunately, it's just ads for our own stuff, but whatever, you know, we're working on that. Um, and then uh, you can check out our Patreon if you want to support our coverage, patreon.com slash live for some exclusive perks, including early access and ad-free versions of all podcast episodes and a monthly Q&A session for all of our Lovely, wonderful, supportive patrons. Thank you guys so much for that. Uh, we're going to continue running our Senior Bowl fund um, till the end of the month because we're down, we're down about I don't know sixty bucks or something like that. So if you want to throw throw down some cash towards that, you can do so at streamlabs.com/slash/thefalcoholic/slash/tip, or you can go to my Venmo on uh, Twitter at Falcoholic Kevin. Uh, make sure you leave a question with that. We'll be sure to answer that live on the show uh, for you. Uh, but we just appreciate everyone's support. Uh, it's been tremendous. We really do 
value that and, and appreciate that so much, guys. So thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time on the Falcoholic Podcast until Wednesday night at 8 p.m. We'll see you next time, folks. Have a great day.